Welcome back. We're back with part six of tutorial 25. So we left it with our master and our backup. Um, I'm just going to do a quick show of VRRP. It is a day later, so I've left this hanging around in my system. So I'm just going to check these are all still working fine and making sure that they can ping each other. Expect a bit of a time. Yeah, it's fine. Look, both pinging each other absolutely where we left it. So, what are we going to do? Well, now, as I said at the end of part five, we want to start doing our VLANs. And we're going to get our VLANs in here. So, we need to do a bit of work first. So, what I'm going to do is actually just remove this machine. So, I'm going to stop it and then I'm going to delete it. Yep, I want to delete the machine. And the work I was talking about, if I go into configure here for our switch, is we need to configure our switch to have trunk links for the router. Um, I've done it on that side already. Now this side we have to do the same. So we know that these are, and we can bring up our monikers here, we've got port 7 and 2 and port 8 and 1. So ports 1, 2, 7 and 8 need to be trunk ports because we're going to be doing VLANs. So we're going to configure this and we're going to bring this up and I am going to say double click on there and make that a dot one Q. So it's a trunk, port two, dot one Q, port seven, dot one Q, and port eight, dot one Q. Okay, that's fine. We now need to have our other uh, VLANs. Now I did, yep, drag the whole picture for us. So we're going to have a DMZ private for London on 1238 and then a private web, a private app, a private data and so on. So we want to create these. So let's leave that on that side and let's just bring out some machines. So let's have one, two, three, four and five for now. Let's just do that. Let's rename these as we go along. So change the host name. And this one is going to be Private DMZ London. So we'll go Private DMZ. Okay. Rename this one is going to be Private Web. Okay. Next one, Private App. Sounds like we're in the army. Next one, private data. Next one, private management. Okay, that's fine. We also have a public. So let's get one more out here. And that's actually on the other side. No, we don't need to worry about that, so delete that. Um, we don't need to worry about that. This is only the private side. We have our public taken care of by this machine already out there. On a public, it's not really a VLAN. On software, it would be a VLAN, but for us, because we're just in a lab environment here, we've emulated the outside world with this link here. So, we've got all of these. Now, we want to put in our VLANs. So, I'm going to bring up the configure on switch two and how many links we have one two three four five but we already have no there's no link between these yet so one two three four i'm going to add a port nine and i'm going to go to port three and it's vlan number so this is going to be for private dmz is one two three eight one two three eight add port 4 is going to be for the web and it's 1234 1234 add that the next VLAN is 1235 that's for the app one for data 1236 and then finally, port 9 here is going to be 1237. Okay, we'll add that one in. So 
So we'll go OK. Now we'll create our links. So we're going from port 3 to that machine there. From port 4 to that machine there. Let me just make sure we've got that right. So port 3, I go into configuration. Port 3 is 1238. Private DMZ. 1238. 1238. Yep, that should be fine. So I'll go back in, creating these links. 5 to app. 6 to data. And 9 to private management. And then just for completeness while we're here, we will configure this and we'll add... We'll add a number 10, and number 10 will be a trunk as well. I've just added two more. We wanted to go to 10 and add it as a trunk, and then 11 we can delete. 10, add, okay. Like I say, for completeness, port 10, down to this one. We'll stick it on port 1. Okay, super. So, we have our diagram the way we want it. We now need to configure these up. So, we now need to give these an address on each one of these um, VLANs. So, I'm going to just move that over here. I am going to start all of these. In fact, you can highlight them like this and go start. And that will start all of them up at the same time. So I'm going to go console on this one. Um, I'm going to kill both of these. Okay, so this is our private DMZ. So IP is going to be Private DMZ is on 1238. 10.1.14.1 is the network. And 3 and 4 are the HSRPs, which means 5 is the next available address. So 10.1.14.10 um, I'm going to make all these machines. We're going to have that as a 26. And its gateway is going to be on 10.1.14.2. Um, no, that's the gateway for the whole network. The, yeah, no, that will be fine. Yeah. Okay. I'm also going to, while we're at it, bring up the console for this one. If I do a show IP, okay, that's fine. I'm going to ping 10.1.14.10. We haven't got a route through. No, that's fine. I expected that because nothing knows about the 10.14 network yet. So we'll just get these all configured up and make sure that we have IP addresses on all of these machines. So this one is going to be IP 10. Dot, this is on the web. 10.1.10.10. Slash 26, we 10.1.10.2. Okay. It's absolutely fine. If I'm not setting these up correct, I'll just redo them again. I'm going to keep them in order down below. Third one. And it is just mechanically going through and adding the addresses here. The app is on 11.10, whoops, slash 26, 1.11.2. 10.1.11.2, .1 yep. Mechanically getting them all set up. So now I've got a plethora of these 
little consoles, IP 10.1.10. That one was on 11, this one will be on 12, yep. 12 dot 10 slash 26 and 10.1.12.2. Okay, and then finally management, bring up a console, IP 10.1.12. Management is on 13.10 slash 26 and 10.1.13.2. Now, not dissimilar to what you'll face in um, software itself, we have a whole load of emulated VLANs out here, and they're VLANs by virtue of the fact that A, the switch sees them as a VLAN, and B, these are machines on particular IP subnets with a specific IP gateway. Now they can't ping each other at all at the moment, that's what I was typing in down here. Of course they can't because they don't know about their gateway. So their gateway is going to be, and this is why we changed these into trunk connections over here, their gateway is going to be our VRRP pair. So it could have been one of these machines if you haven't got a high availability pair, but I'm doing this as a HA pair so we're going to have a virtual IP address on each of our interfaces for each one of the VLANs that we've now identified. And that is how you configure your VLANs up on your Viata. So when you order a new VLAN in software, you will have to tell your Viata about that VLAN and actually configure a VIF, a virtual interface, for that VLAN. And that's what we're going to be doing in the rest of this particular part six. So let's get on now back to our actual machines and configure these VIFs. Okay, so we're back on our RTR LONA 1 and I'm going to go into config mode. We've configured these all up. They're all attached to the switch, which is fine. So layer two is working. We can see greens all over the place. We know we can't ping anything because this router, our router pair, does not know anything about, anything about the actual machines that we have in play here. So, we're going to say, um, add the actual um, virtual interface. That's what we're going to do first. So, we're going to say set interface bonding because we have our bonds, and this is going on bond one, because it's on the private side. In fact, before we do that, let's do a run show interfaces. <clears throat> our entire 10 network side is on our bond one. So that's what we want to keep in mind here, that we're going on bond one. Um, so we're going set interface bonding bond one, so it's going on the bond one physical interface or our bonded. <laughs> There's so many, so many layers of virtuality going on here. So the physicals are the ETH. The bond is sat on our ETH one and ETH three to create the bond. And then we have actually have a VRRP running on V1 on bond one. Um, so it's very easy to get, you know, basically hung up on what's real, what's not real, and, and etc. Bear with it, because it becomes fairly mechanical, all of this stuff. So we're saying there's a VIV, and it's on the 1238 network, and let's just double check that as well. Here's our traffic flows. Our private DMZ is VLAN 1238. Just to double check that on the switch, we'll go into the switch configuration. Port 3 is on 1238. Okay, so it is going to be 1238. And then it's address. Well, what address are we going to use? So oh, let's bring this up again. Its address is going to be one of the HSRPs on the 1238. So we go to 1238, and it's going to be one of the HSRPs, one of these VRRP addresses. Why is it going to be one of them? 
And who's going to get the other one? Well, the other, the dot four, is going to go on our secondary half of our high availability pair here. Makes sense? Hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to say its address is on the 10.1.14.3 and it's a slash 26. We're then going to say um, we should give it a description. Yeah, we should give it a description because that way we can remember what this is. So we will say this is private DMZ. So we'll give it a quick description. So after the description and the address, we want to say that this is in a VRRP, VRRP group, because we have our group, and that VRRP group is group one, because we only have the one group between our high availability pair here, and we're going to have an advertise interval, just like we did for the other interface. We're going to make that a second, then the preempt, because we're not going to allow the machine to come back as master, what we checked the other day as well, and take over again as master. So it will just stay in backup mode. So preempt is going to be false. After the preempt, what do we have next? It's priority. Which machine are we on? We're on the master, 254. Once we've done priority, we'll add the RFC compatibility. And then we have our sync group. And our sync group is going to be V group 1. Once we've done our V group 1, we now need to give the actual gateway address because this router is acting as the gateway. So we're giving it a virtual address. And that virtual address is on the 10.1.14, and we can bring it up again. VLAN 1238, the gateway address, 10.1.14.2, slash 26. I'm going to commit that, and I'm going to save it. And I'm going to run show interfaces. And do we have a new private network? Private DMZ, yes we do, it's up here. So if I do that, I can show you private DMZ, there it is, on the 10.1.14.3. And its actual virtual address, it's V1, is on 1.2.3.8.V1, that one there. So we'll end up with a whole load of these. We've done that. Will it, can it actually see? Um, can, yeah, can the public internet machine, now we actually have this alive and active, um, for instance, can I run ping uh, 10.1.14.10? I can see it from my router. Can I see it from this machine if I bring up a console? Here we go. So I killed it earlier. Do the show IP. This is out on the public. Can I ping through to 10.1.14.10, the machine on our VLAN over here? Yes, I can. So this is good news. We have our first VIF and our first VLAN up and running. So let's do another few. Let's do the, um, oh, I guess we should do the second side, shouldn't we? Um, Zeus. Oh. Yep, conf. Let's do a run show interfaces, because we've kept them in lockstep the whole way along. So what I want to do on this one is make this the backup and give it a lesser priority. So let's do that. Let's keep these in lockstep the whole way along. So again, we're going to set interfaces, bonding, bond one, because it's on the private side of the equation here. 
and we're going to say viv one two three eight that was our actual vlan so our vlan's one two three eight and its address is going to be ten dot one dot fourteen dot four twenty six why is it dot four that's the second half of the hsrp that we have available, our two reserved addresses. Okay? So that's that set. Give it a description, because it's easy when you're adding loads of these to get out of sync, private DMZ, happy with that. So now we want to do the VRRP, just like we did VRRP group, and it's group one, and the advertise interval is one, the preempt is false, the whoops, the priority. This differs slightly, it's 253 if you remember from the previous tutorial. It's a lesser priority. We'll give it the RFC compatibility. And then we'll add the sync group. And the sync group is V group one. And be careful with your spelling on all of these or else it'll be in a different sync group and it won't sync. Finally, it's virtual address. And the virtual address, it is the gateway. So that's 10.1.14.2 slash 26. 14.2. Do we want to double check that? Let's double check it. Where's our diagram? What's the gateway? 14.2. Perfect. Let's commit that. Up here, I'm going to do a save. Just in case, I'm going to do a save here as well. So if I run show interfaces, we should have administratively down on our bond one one two three eight v one it is exactly what we'd expect the interface is there now on 14.4 but its shared virtual interface on the 14.2 is administratively down exactly what we'd expect so that's good so we've got these in lockstep what's next well let's do um our private web, let's bring our diagram up. One, two, three, four, this one is private web London. One, two, three, four. So that's on a 10, two, 10, three, and 10, four. And you can see why I chose sequential numbers now. So to do this, we go set, interface, and it's all very mechanical this, bonding, bond one, they're all on the bond one side and the vif the the uh, vlan is going to be one two three four and its address for this vlan is going to be on 10.1.10.3 slash 26 the first one of the two hsrps its description is going to be private web We are going to say VRRP, VRRP group is one, and the advertise is one, preempt is false. You can make that true if you want, but I prefer to have it false. Um, priority. Which machine are we on? We're on RTR Lono 1, so the priority is 254. It is the master. Um, RFC compatibility and we got our sync group is V group 1 and our virtual address well, our virtual address is that gateway address so virtual is on the 10.1.10.2 slash 26 that's why I made them all so easy to remember I'm going to commit that, I'm going to save that, and I'm going to run show interfaces. 
So we should have a 1, 2, 3, 4 and a 1, 2, 3, 4, V1. And we do. This is the private web. Can I ping my private web from here? I should be able to. 10.10. .10. Timeout, timeout, get it. Yes, perfect. If I go to my private, which one is on 10.14, can I ping 10.1.10.10 10 10? Yes, I can. So I can go from DMZ to private web and from both of those out to the public internet machine at the moment. Because all we're doing at the moment is getting our VLANs actually assigned, putting in our VIFs, getting all of the VLANs arranged. And again, on those VLANs, I've done one link here. I could have linked in a switch and had 10 machines hanging off that switch for 10 IP addresses. Could have done it that way, possibly should have done it that way. Um, but we're trying to keep this as simple as possible. We're just emulating machines on a VLAN by having one of these VPCSs. Um, so hopefully this is making sense. Very mechanical. We're working our way through it. So down on the south side again, we need to add exactly what we've just done for the um, other half of the VRRP because currently it doesn't know about one, two, three, four. So we need to set interface bonding bond one. The VIF is on one, two, three, four. Its address this time is going to be 10 to one, whoops, one dot ten dot four slash 26. So we have three and four. It's virtual will be the two for the gateway, but it's actual address is that. And we're going to have description, private web, the advertise, oh sorry, the VRRP, whoa, VRRP, 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 Group is one, and the advertised interval is one. Preempt, whoa, empt is false. Its priority is going to be two five three because it's the backup, and its RFC compatibility. After that, we're going for sync group B group one. I just have to make sure I spelled that correctly. So it's virtual address. What's his virtual address? It's the gateway. And um, this one's on 10.02.26. Commit that. Assertion failed, that's fine. Save that, run, show, interface. There we go. So they're both mirroring each other nicely. Administratively down is exactly what we want to see. And we go back up the top again. And my apologies that this is so much uh, work in terms of the mechanics of it, but at least it ingrains it time and time again that this is how you set it up. So let's turn our attention to uh, the app. Up next up is private app. So private app is on. Let's bring up our little diagram again. Private app, one, two, three, five is the VLAN um, and it's on the 10.1.11. So we will do set interfaces, bonding, Bond one again, and this is going to be the VLAN is going to be one, two, three, five, and its address is going to be 10.1.11.3 slash 26. I should emphasize again that your VLANs won't in any way be as sequential as mine, but they should, in theory, 
um, follow the pattern of the gateway, sorry, the network address, then the gateway, then the two HSRPs that are reserved. Um, but they won't be anywhere near as sequential as these examples are here. But for the purposes of getting used to this, you would, you would go and find whatever VLAN you've been assigned, go in and examine the subnet, and go and find the HSRPs, the gateway, the broadcast, and the network address. We're going to give it a description. And this one is going to be a private app. Then we're going to do the VRRP, VRRP-group is 1, and its advertise interval is going to be 1, its preempt is going to be false, its um, uh, priority is going to be 254 because we're on the master here. I'm going to give it the RFC compatibility. I really need to look up what that is. Um, after that, we're going to say the sync group is V group one. And then finally, it's virtual address. And the virtual address is its gateway address, 11.2 slash 26. Commit that, let's pop down here, let's do set interfaces, uh, bonding, bond1, vif is going to be 1235 is what we said it was, its address is 10.1.11.4 slash 26. Description is going to be private app. Whoops, private app. That's not going to work. That will work though. Whoops. Oh, Apple. Address description. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Right. Okay. VRRP, VRRP, group one. And it's going to be advertise of one. It's going to have preempt. False. Oh, seriously. It's going to have a priority of 253. It is going to be RFC. Then we're going to have a sync group of V group 1. I'll take my time and check that. And then a virtual address of 10.1.11.2 slash 26. Commit that. Run show interfaces. 1, 2, 3, 5, and a V1 administratively down. Run show interfaces. And they're all there. Lovely. Okay. So continuing on, mechanically going through all of these, um, we have one, two, three, six for the data. So I'm going to arrow up now and start running through these a bit quicker. One, two, three, six. This is going to be on the 12. Description is going to be private data VRRP VRRP group is one and it's going to have an advertise interval of one preempt false um, 
priority, priority of 254. It's going to be RFC, sync group, V group 1. Yep, virtual address. Is going to be on the 10.1.12.2 slash 26. Commit that one down here. Let's grab this one 12. Dot, whoops, 12.4. Easy to override these, and it's easy to hit return there before you do the 1, 2, 3, 6. Description. Is private data VRRP VRRP group one advertise one preempt false priority two five three. RFC sync group V group one and finally virtual address is ten dot one dot twelve dot two twenty six load of yep yeah. run Show interface, run show interface. Let me just check these numbers. Three two, three two, three two, and three two, and four 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 down below. Ten eleven twelve, ten eleven twelve. Lovely. All working absolutely as planned. We have our web app data and the DMZ. So what have we got left? We've got management left. So one last one for the cheap seats. Let's go set interfaces, bonding, bond one. VIF is going to be, um, in theory, one, two, three, seven. But let's see, management, one, two, three, seven. And we have two, three, four. Lovely, as always, yeah, but on the 13. So it's one, two, three, seven. One, two, three, seven, address is 10.1.13.2 um, slash 26. Let's just double check that. I've got so many numbers running, careering round in my head at the moment. Not that one. This one. 10.1.13.3. That's fine. There we go. Description. Private, whoops, private management, VRRP, VRRP group one, advertise is one, preempt, false, priority, two, five, four, RFC, Sync group is V group one, and then finally its virtual address is the network. Sorry, is the gateway ten dot one dot thirteen dot two slash twenty six. Commit, and then finally down here set interface. Oops, or interface interface bonding bond one. VIF one two three seven address is on ten dot one dot thirteen dot four slash twenty six. Its description is going to be private management. It's VRRP VRRP group 
is one, the advertised interval is one, preempt empt is false, priority is two five three. RFC compatibility sync group is V group one. And then finally, the virtual virtual address is 10.1.13.2.26. That's it. Committed. Run show interfaces down here. Run show interfaces up here. They're all there. All of our VLANs are now defined. We have web, app, data, management, and DMZ. Web, app, data, management, and DMZ. We still have our bonds. We still have our overall VRRP for the local traffic on the router itself. So, in theory now, I will bring up this machine, which is on show IP. And I'll grab one of the other random ones over here. And I'll do a show IP. So this one's on 11, this one's on 14. Well, let's ping each other. Ping 10.1.14.10. See what happens. There it is. All working. All of our VLANs are now there. They're all running nicely through the switch on the trunk. So we have emulated our VLANs. And after all that VLANing, we can finally now prepare for the firewalls. Because, of course, they're all pinging each other perfectly happily. So if I drag the public one up, and you can see here it's on the 159. It's able to ping through to 11.10. It's able to ping through to 12.10. Hopefully, yep, um, and so on and so forth. Because there's no protection. We have all of our VLANs, absolutely. They're all talking to each other quite happily as well. This is talking to them too because we have set up our router with our VLANs and it's routing because of course they're all directly connected to interfaces on the router. So it doesn't need routes as such. But they're all talking to each other because we haven't got a firewall. And that's the whole reason we went about this, was to build a firewall. But we're ready now. We're ready for part seven, which will be finally configuring up the actual firewall rules themselves to say, this can talk to this, but this can't talk to this, and this can, and so on. And we're gonna use our, fire, our firewall mapping that we developed earlier to do this. Join me for part seven. That's the VIFs. Hopefully that uh, puts in your mind how to do VLANs and when you order VLANs within SoftLayer, that's how you set them up on your Viata.